Okay, welcome to the 2022 Science Olympiad Coaches Workshop for Charged Up. I'm Ken Kuchek, the event supervisor. Let's get started. Um, I want to uh, talk about some of the resources that are available to you. The, the Science Olympiad uh, website, uh, it's posted on the screen there, is an excellent resource to uh, get materials, to get prepared for the event. Uh, the rules are there. Uh, there's presentations from previous workshops, and this uh, workshop will be posted soon. Uh, handouts from the workshops, example questions and answers. Uh, there's the FAC, and the FAC is uh, where people can post questions, uh, and we will answer the questions as they come in online and so everyone will see the uh, responses. Uh, also on the website, they talk about a kit that's available, a kit of parts uh, relevant to the event. Um, and also there's an, a link to what's called the kit insert and it's a, a detailed description of the components and all the basic principles used in the event. It's very, very useful. OK, let's just go over some of the rules real quick. Um, students will be tested on their knowledge of electricity and related concepts. And the, and the test, the exam will cover DC circuits, so not AC and your home voltage. So it's all uh, low, low voltage, it's safe. Conductors, diodes, voltage, current, resistance, uh, schematic drawings using a, a meter, and electrical sources and electrical safety. Uh, the team size is typically one or two students, typically two. Um, students uh, need to understand basic terms like conductors, insulators, open circuit versus short circuit, normally open versus normally closed switches. You have series and parallel circuits and series parallel circuits uh, using a meter, um, what is voltage, current, resistance, and uh, diodes, sources of electricity, and some electrical safety pr practices. Uh, the format. The format of the event is typically seven stations, and students will rotate through all seven stations, and there will be equal time at each and every station. So you may not start at station one, but here there's seven stations and then you go through a rotating process every few minutes. Five of those stations are true false and multiple choice using a zip grade. You know, so the, the, for, for those of you unfamiliar, the zip grade is the uh, uh, electronic form uh, where you fill in the bubbles. Do you get one point? There's one point questions when you have two choices, for example, true, false, or when there's only two options available of a multiple choice. There's two point questions when there's three to five options available on a multiple choice question. Then you have zero point questions, and these are the tiebreakers. And so, they're not used in normal scoring. Uh, it's only used if there's a tie, and it's more of an essay type question. Uh, one station will be drawing a circuit on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. The scoring, you will get one to two points for each part of the drawing that is correct, plus a bonus if 100% correct. And finally, the last station is a constructing of a circuit and all the components will be provided. So all the batteries, the switches, the wiring. This, uh, this station, it's an all or nothing. You either get zero points, 20 points, or 40 points. There's no partial credit. Um, and you'll have two choices. There'll be an easy circuit which would be a total of 20 points. There'll be a, or you can choose to do a harder circuit, which is 
40 points, uh, which is more complex. You can only do one of the two. You don't have enough time to do both, uh, but you can only choose one. So choose the one that you think you will do the best at and finish. Okay, any questions just on, on the basic event and, and the rules before we get into example problems? Uh, this is Victor Mendez. Uh, quick question. Uh, are these slides available for review later? Yes, the, the entire, all the slides will be put on the website and also this, the video of this presentation will also be put on the website. So both of them will be there. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Yes. Um, for the stations you were just going over, as a, with a group of two and a team, are the kids working on this together or are they doing this individually? Good question. Yes, they are always working together at each station and they move together station to station. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on. Can I ask uh, more questions later as they come? Okay, the first thing we're gonna go over is schematic symbols. And these are uh, the symbols that are used to represent different components. So for example, you have a battery and a battery symbol has a long line and a short line um, for the, uh, this, describing the battery and then you must show the polarity. The long line must have a little plus symbol and the short line must have a little uh, minus symbol. Uh, this is very important. It will not be graded correct if you're missing the polarity because it's, it's very difficult to distinguish between long and short lines uh, when someone draws them. Uh, so you must show the polarity. Uh, diodes. Diodes, again, you must show the polarity. Here you have a, a triangle with a, a line in front of it, and uh, the, the bottom, the back side of the triangle has is the plus. Where the line is, that's the minus. Uh, LEDs. LEDs are a type of uh, diode, and same thing. You have must show the polarity and the two arrows that you see coming out of the LED is actually representing the light. An LED is a diode that produces light. Um, next, switches. A normally open switch. And then we went, next is normally closed switch. So a normally open switch is your typical light switch on your wall. It's open until you close it. And so that's why that arrow is showing that when you flip the switch, the switch is going down and gonna make connection. Uh, where the normally closed switch is the opposite. It's normally closed and when you flip the switch, you open the switch by the, the way the arrow is shown. Um, next, we have a single pole single throw switch as and you can see the symbol for that uh, that's the most common type of switch used next you have a single pole double throw switch and so here the switch can be uh, connected in two different positions and these switches are commonly used in your home when you have two switches uh, controlling the same light um, Next is the symbol for a light bulb. It's a circle uh, with uh, kind of a loop in the middle. And uh, the two connections are, would be on the left and right side. Okay, next are some sample problems that, uh, that you may see, these types of problems. And here you gotta look at the words very carefully. Uh, so select A if all of the bulbs in the circuit drawn will light as shown. So key is all the bulbs as shown. So if there's a switch 
it's the position of the switch as it's shown, not if you turn the switch on or off, but as the switch is shown. And then select B if one or more bulbs will not light. So if we go through these four examples, uh, example one on the far left, you have two batteries in series with two light bulbs. In this example, both bulbs will light as shown. The second, uh, second example, we have two batteries on the left in parallel connected to two light bulbs in parallel. And this one is A, they both, both bulbs will light as shown. Next one, three, we actually have a battery with a switch in the open position and a bulb. So the answer, answer here is B, the bulb will not light as shown because the switch is open. Uh, number four, we have two batteries actually are, that are opposed to one another. So they have the uh, reverse polarity on each other. You have a switch that's normally closed that's short circuiting the batteries. And then you have a, a, a bulb, light bulb in parallel with that switch in batteries. So this is a short circuit. And so no bulbs will light. So the answer is B. Next, some uh, circuit examples. Uh, let's, let's go to number five. Which bulbs will light when switch X is closed in circuit one, which is the top? So in circuit one, when switch X is closed, light bulb A will light and light bulb B will not be on. So the correct answer is A. Next one, problem six. Switch S1 controls which lights in circuit two, that's the lower circuit. So switch S1 controls light one, two, and three. So the correct answer is D, all the lights. Question number seven. What type of circuit is shown in circuit two? We have two batteries in series with a normally closed switch with three light bulbs that are in series. So this is called a series circuit. For this answer, A is correct. Okay, next, some examples of true, false, multiple choice. Um, for these true, false, choose A if true and B if false. It is never safe to touch a downed power line. This is true. Number nine, amps are the unit used to measure the amount of electrical current. This is a definition, and that's true. Amps are for current, volts are for voltage. Number 10, a short wire has higher resistance than a long wire. This is false. The longer the wire, the higher the resistance. Okay, the next section is on meters and using an electrical meter. So number 11, to measure voltage in a standard household electrical socket, an electrician would use what setting on his meter? And our options are voltage AC, amperage DC, 
bat, ohms, and voltage DC. So a good way to do some of these multiple choice questions is rule out the ones that you know are incorrect and then choose from the ones that are left. So if we start at the bottom, voltage DC, that is not correct because uh, uh, a household uses AC electricity. So E is not correct. Uh, next one is ohms. Well, ohms is not used to measure voltage. We know that one's not correct. Um, the next one up, bat or battery is used to measure battery voltage. Uh, we know that's not correct because household electricity is not batteries. Uh, next one up uh, is amps DC. Again, this uh, home uses AC power, not DC, so we know B is incorrect. And finally, A is volts AC, and that is the correct answer. Okay, next question, 12. The resistance of the aluminum of an aluminum rod is approximately, and here again, rule out the answers that you know cannot be correct. Um, so resistance is not volts and not amps. Resistance is ohms. So A is volts. That can't be right. B is volts. That can't be right. C is milliamps. That's not correct. It's not resistance. Uh, so finally, we're left with our last two answers of 110 ohms and 0 0.02 ohms. Both of them are uh, amounts of resistance. And so uh, aluminum is a conductor. So there would be uh, a very low number for resistance. And so that's why you could determine that 0 0.02 would be the likely answer. I have a question in regards to that that question, Ken. Yes. The um, for that aluminum rod, the you're expecting the students to know that a very low number in ohms indicates a conductor. Rather, they won't be allowed to experimentally determine that that's the answer. Is that true? That's correct. This this particular where this question is is a station that is not a hands-on station, so it's just answering questions. So yes, you need to know the principles of resistance and that aluminum is a conductor and that conductors have low resistance. In other stations, you will be using a meter to determine whether something, an object is conductive or not, and, and we'll get to that. And here it is. <laughs> The next, uh, uh, next group of questions is a station that's uh, um, where you make a circuit tester and then you actually can measure um, conductivity. So a circuit tester, you could either use an electrical meter uh, on the test, uh, the correct setting, um, or you can build your own real quick. You can use a battery uh, with uh, a number of wires and connect a uh, light to it and then use the yellow and black leads to touch different objects to see whether the light turns on. If the light turns on, they are a conductor. If the light does not turn on, then they're considered an insulator. So on the left is you're showing, the left picture shows uh, just the, the setup that you're going to use. And on the right, you're actually touching the black and the yellow leads together. You see the light turn on, and that's how you can use uh, this circuit tester to determine whether an object is a conductor or an insulator. And so here, question 13, an aluminum rod is what? A, a conductor, B, an insulator, or C, both? So using your circuit tester, you can touch both ends of the aluminum rod and the light would turn on and that would tell you that it's a conductor. A is the correct answer.
the next question, 14, um, you will see these type cards, not this exact one, but these type cards uh, in the event. And so the top of the card looks like the picture on the left. The back of the card looks like the center picture. And what's inside actually looks like the picture on the right. So some of the metal posts are connected together with wires. And so part of the, the test is for a student to use a circuit tester, either one that they build or an electrical meter, to determine which numbers are connected to which letters. So you just go through. You, For example, you would take your circuit tester and touch it on 14 and then go A, B, C, D, E and see which one is it connected to. When does your light turn on? Uh, and then keep going down the list. Touch 15 and then go A, B, C, D, E. And you could determine exactly which ones are connected. And so the question in this example is, button 14 is connected to which letter button? And in this example, it's C. Question? Yes. You could go back one slide. That one, uh, uh, is the test possibly having something like that where these pictures show up and have them figure it out by visual inspection of the drawing? Uh, no, the students will never see the, the picture that is shown on the right. That is okay. actually that is actually inside the two cardboard pieces. That's just shown here to show you if you want to make these uh, uh, on your own, you can make okay. these to do testing. Um, but the students will only see the top of the card on the left and the bottom back of the card on the in the middle. That's what I thought it would be. I was so confused seeing it presented this way, whether they were going to see like this on the test. OK, but thanks for yep. clarifying. Yes, thank you. OK, the, the, the next section is uh, actually using a uh, commercial uh, electric meter, meter. They're commonly called uh, a multimeter or a, a VOM meter, volt ohm uh, meter. And so our first question is, which setting is used to measure the voltage of a battery? And so the, the students need to, again, use process of elimination, get rid of the ones that you know are not true, and, and then choose the correct answer. So to measure voltage of a battery, uh, we know that a, a battery is a DC electricity. So we're looking for voltage DC. So A is not correct because that's voltage AC. B is not correct. That's amps DC. C is battery. This particular meter has a battery uh, section, and it's in the, if you look at the circle, it's in about the four or five o'clock position. And you can see, if you really zoom in, it says 1.5 volts, and that's DC, and then nine volts DC. So battery measures voltage DC. So that could possibly be the correct answer. Uh, next, we have ohms. We, ohms is resistance, so that's not voltage, so that's not correct. And finally, we have amps AC. Again, that's not correct. So our correct answer is C, that. Next, number 16. The voltage of one battery is approximately Again, they can use a meter to, to determine this, but the batteries are all 1.5 volts. And they can measure that with the battery function on the meter. And again, if you look at the other answers, the, the, a lot of all, all the other answers do not uh, cannot be true. So that confirms that your answer is uh, B, 1.5 volts. Next is resistors. So resistors 
are electrical components that resist electricity and create heat, and uh, they are coated with colors. So there are three stripes. There's three colored stripes on the left side of a resistor, and then you're going to see a blank space, and then you're going to see one more stripe. That's the tolerance. So the first three uh, stripes represent the resistance value of the resistor. So the first, if you look at the chart on the on the right, the leftmost stripe is the first digit, the middle stripe is the second digit, and the third stripe is what's called the multiplier and how many zeros you're going to put behind it. So let's just do the first question to uh, get into this. Uh, the first two bands, blue stands for what number? So if we look at the chart, go down the chart from black, brown, red, all the way down to blue, and you can see that the first two bands in blue is a six. So the answer is C, six. An example of the resistance of a resistor is on question 18. We have green, blue, yellow, then a space, and then gray. So in this example, our first stripe is green. Go to your chart for the, the first digit, and green is a five. Next, go to blue. Blue is a six. Next, we go, the next stripe is yellow, and that's times 10,000. So the answer on this one is green, blue, yellow is five, six times 10,000. So 56,000 ohms, and it's sometimes referred to as uh, 560, I'm sorry, it's 560,000 ohms, and that can be also represented as 560 K ohms, So, because a K ohm is 1,000 ohms. So in the uh, district competitions, the uh, this chart will be provided. So the students will have that uh, available to them to reference. In the county competition, they may or may not have this chart. So they would need to memorize this chart. A uh, question about uh, this. Yes. Uh, are the resistors going to be presented in printed form or are they gonna grab a live one? And if they do grab a live one, how do they make sure that they are oriented the right way to decode it? The, uh, these will be, um, there are resistors to, to identify that there's resistors, but these questions will be actually on paper. So it's the way you see it here. So it would be a example of a resistor with the color codes. Um, and so they, it, it's, it's, uh, they don't have to look at a tiny resistor uh, uh, during this part portion of the competition. So it'll be a, a paper question. Thank you. OK. Uh, next, we get into the station where you would draw a circuit. So the circuit that you see is the answer. So they would not see that uh, in when when they get to the station. They would see a, a written description of what type of circuit they need to draw. And the answer is drawn on the right side. So let's just take a look at what would be provided. Using the schematic symbols only and the space below, draw the following circuit. So they need to draw two batteries in series. And again, remember, they must show the polarity and connect that in series to two bulbs, two light bulbs in series. 
So the answer is shown on the right. The two batteries are in series. And when batteries are in series, when the two batteries are connected, they actually connect the positive of one battery touches the negative of another battery. And so then a series circuit is, is basically a circle. Um, and so all the batteries are connected in a circle. The, the two light bulbs are connected together and back to uh, the negative of the battery. The next uh, station is constructing a circuit. Let me let me go back. Um, this uh, to draw the circuit. I, this example shows a series circuit. It may not necessarily be a series circuit. It uh, may be a parallel circuit. Uh, it could include switches. Um, again. The student needs to be familiar with the different uh, components and, and uh, concepts and be able to draw whatever circuit in the fashion that it's described in uh, the problem. Next is construct a circuit. And here the students will be provided what they see, what you see in the rectangular box. Uh, they'll be provided a uh, um, a description of actually they will they will not see the picture of uh, the circuit because that's showing that's basically the answer. Um, so they will be shown the the text description of three batteries in series connected in series to two LEDs that are in parallel. And there is one single pole, single throw switch that controls both LEDs. And again, the key word is both. And both helps you, uh, helps tell you that the switch is controlling um, both of the LEDs that are in parallel. And so all the components will be provided. There'll be batteries, there'll be wires, there'll be switches, there'll be uh, bulbs, there'll be LEDs, and students will have the time to work together to build the circuit. Uh, when they're finished, um, have them raise their hand, and so I can examine it and test it. You will not get credit until I, unless I see it. So, and you only get one chance. You can't go back and make changes or corrections after I look at it and evaluate it. So be sure to double check your work before you raise your hand. And there is no partial credit. It's, it's all or nothing. Um, so if you chose the easy circuit, and again, your students need to be realistic with their abilities and Choose the easy circuit if you know you can complete the easy circuit and you're unsure of whether you can complete the hard circuit. But if your students are more capable and advanced and they're very familiar with uh, these principles and the advanced principles, um, have them do the hard circuit and there it's 40 points. So the scoring on this one is either 20 points for the easy circuit 40 points for the, the harder circuit or zero if you do not get either of them correct. But you can only do one of the circuits. So as you approach the station, they need to look at both and decide which one they are more most confident with in, in getting it correct. Will they be reminded to raise their hands when they're done? I could imagine the chaos of that room. Yes, I, I mean, we want we say raise your hands the reality is i will be standing right there so um and watching as they build these circuits so but i i i need some acknowledgement that they're 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 complete and they're ready for me to look at it because you know i don't want to look at it and evaluate it before they are are ready and and have double checked it
Okay, that's it. That's it for the, the workshop presentation today. Is there any questions on, on anything? Um, the resistors, the chart that you showed on the slide, is that exactly the one that they'll see? Because I've seen the different ones. Um, I believe I purchased one of the kits and I can't remember if they were showing it with uh, no, the multiplier is showing like 10 to the one and 10 to the two. And, and I wait a moment. Uh, I don't think a fifth grader or a third grader has that in their heads yet. Sure. I did. I did ask a, a teacher. And she said, yes, a uh, fourth grader is very unlikely. A fifth grader might uh, see the Ks and the Ms or kilo and mega, but the powers of 10. So I was kind of afraid if which one will be presented. I'm hoping it's this one. Yes, it's, uh, uh, it's this exact drawing that you see on the screen right now. So this is the one, this is the only one that is used and that they will see. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions? Again, uh, you, you will have uh, this video and this presentation, both will be posted on the website. Uh, so you, you will have the opportunity to go back and review it again um, and review it with the students. Um, also, if you have questions, uh, check the website, the, the FAC on the website has actually questions that have been asked in previous years. So go there first. Uh, it's, it's possible that your question is all, has already been answered in the FAC, so check the FAC. If you still have a question, uh, just post, you can post a question at the FAC, and then we will get those questions and then we will answer them as quickly as possible. Any other questions before we end? Okay, well, thank you for joining us today and uh, good luck with the Charged Up event.